Hi, my name is Aaron and I'm from Auto E Clinic. An important part of the vehicle comfort is the air conditioning system, especially in the summer. Let's face it, a hot ride is not a fun ride. We have a truck here today that the AC blows hot air out when it's on, as well as overheats. Let's dig into it and find out what's going on. In my opinion, the first step to diagnose any AC problem is to evacuate all Freon from the system. Depending on how much Freon is evacuated will also determine the next step in the diagnostic process. You have a high side and a low side pressure lines, fittings. We're going to hook the machine up. High side, low side, they're different sizes. They cannot be mixed up. Red is high side, which is your bigger fitting. Blue is your low side, which is your smaller fitting. Clamp it on, screw it down. Now we'll let the machine do the rest of the work. Uh, turn your machine on. Open your valves from your tank, open your low side. Hit recover and let the machine do its job. This process may take uh, as long as 15 minutes, just let the machine do its job until it cuts off. After the recovery process completed, we were low on Freon. With the customer complaint and with the visual inspection, we know we had a compressor failure. At this point, before we can determine anything else, we're going to replace the compressor, the dryer, and the orifice. Went ahead and unplugged the uh, electrical switches on the compressor. We'll go ahead and take the belt off. Now when you replace the compressor, it's common practice to go ahead and replace the dryer and the orifice. First off, the manufacturer is not going to give you a warranty on the compressor unless you replace the dryer and the orifice. Secondly, if there's any contamination or particles of a compressor failure, they get into the system, they're going to get trapped in the dryer and the orifice. If you don't replace the dryer and the orifice and you put a new compressor on it and some of those particles get into the new compressor, it's going to cause a failure in the new compressor. That's why the manufacturer will not warranty the compressor unless you replace the dryer and the orifice. It's also very good common practice to go ahead and replace your seals when you do it. Anytime you break open any component on the air conditioning system, Replace your seals. There's a flat spot on these bolts on this design of the compressor in order for you to remove the bolts. You see where that spot's flat spot in order to get the bolt in order to get the bolt from the uh, compressor clutch. Make sure you replace your O-rings.
swap out your high side switch. Make sure you got a new seal in there. There's the seal. Slide it back in. to gain access to the orifice. The orifice in this case is also a filter, a screen. If you're going to have any dirt or debris or metal or anything, it's going to collect there. The orifice also takes the pressure from low to high. Without a difference in pressure from low to high, it will not cool. See the metal and the debris on the orifice? This is why you replace your dryer in your orifice. This metal came from the compressor. This is how we know we had an internal compressor failure. If this gets in the system, you have to flush the entire system or else it'll destroy a new compressor. the system. Standard vacuum time on this machine is 15 minutes. The vacuum will pull out any kind of contaminants or moisture out of the system. So let it run for the full 15 minutes. We pulled a vacuum on the system for 15 minutes. We're holding 30 inches of mercury vacuum plus, which is great for an AC system. Now we're going to crank the truck up and charge the system. Right now the compressor, the system's operating. The system's full of Freon. You can tell by the gauges it's operating properly. You want to be typically between 30 and 40 PSI on your low side, anywhere between 2 and 200, or 200 and 250 rather on your high side. And that all depends on ambient temperature. Right now we're at about 85 degrees ambient temperature, but pretty high humidity. And all of these factors will change the pressures. We don't have a lot, any fluctuation or flutter in the gauges. That's a very good sign. Any type of flutter in the gauges will show a bad compressor. Typically, this right here seems to be operating well. The next step is to put a thermometer in the center vents and test drive. We're test driving the vehicle. The faster you go down the road, the cooler the AC system will get. That's why you always test drive one after you get done. The faster you're going down the road, the more air you have coming through the condenser. Therefore, the more heat you're getting out of the system, the more heat you get out of the system, the colder you make the system. You should be able to noticeably feel a difference as you drive down the road, the system should get cooler. After the test drive, we brought the truck in. It's cooling about 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty optimal for AC performance. We checked to make sure there were no leaks. There was dye in the Freon we added, so there was no leaks anywhere around the seals, compressor, accumulator, or orifice. This concludes our episode on AC work. Sometimes there are electrical problems, sometimes in this case they're mechanical problems, or you can have a seal leak and allow all of your Freon to leak out and your system won't work. But in this case, it was a bad compressor. We got it exchanged, recharged it, system worked good, and it cools. Thank you for tuning in to Auto E-Clinic. Yeah.